Amen. Well, I'm usually a noisy preacher, but I'm, as I travel around, I'm, I'm learning to, to adapt my style to the churches. So um, I want to share with you the title, Come and Come and See. Um, Pastor Alex read the text, so I won't read it again. Give me about 20, 25 minutes of your time. Normally, when I'm, when I'm, if I were your pastor, I would preach for 40, 45 minutes. I'm just a visiting speaker, and I want to be invited back. <laughs> so I'm going to take 20 minutes out of my time and stick to 25 minutes. You know, people like to um, people people like to define and describe places and faces, and where you're from. People like to attack things and ideas based on where you're from. So your location creates a mindset, a mindset that creates a viewpoint. Follow me. And once you're connected or associated with this place, then you become linked to that place. Have you noticed that people quite often deal with us based on where we're from, <clears throat> differently. Are you with me so far? Am I right in saying that? Um, sometimes you're loved because you're from this place. Sometimes you're disdain and scorn because you're from that place. Remember that, that, that very ugly photo that Nigel Farage put up? Remember it? Okay, you don't. Forget it then. But where you're from, you can either be in the limelight or you can be in the fading dim light. <coughs> Coming from a certain place can either bring you success or it can create failures. Your voice can be very powerful or your voice can be weakened. Notice the question that Nathaniel raised in the passage. What did he say? Can any good thing come out of? Come on, you need to talk back to me. Can any good thing come out of? Nazareth. Nazareth. So, Nazareth was what we call a non-descriptive place. As a matter of fact, when you read from Genesis up until Malachi, nobody mentioned in Scripture Nazareth. Our information about Nazareth comes from extra-biblical material. This was a modest place. Uh, uh, Nazareth has about two to 400 people. Uh, in Nazareth, everybody knew everybody. In Nazareth, everybody knew everybody's business. In Nazareth, everybody worshipped in the same space and in the same place. And so when you walk on the street of Nazareth, uh, they would say, this is Ella, this is Nathaniel. Everybody knew everybody. Nazareth was described as modest, insignificant. It, it was a non-place. As a matter of fact, nobody wanted to be linked or inked with Nazareth. Nobody wanted anybody to know that they were from Nazareth. Everybody from Nazareth would erase their information, if they could, from Nazareth. And so if you go to the bank and the bank manager type in your postcode and Nazareth comes up, there'll be no credit given to you. Nazareth. As a matter of fact, Ellen White describes Nazareth. Listen to what the Spirit of Prophecy says. She says, uh, it was an uncelebrated, listen carefully, forgotten town of the beaten path. She captures Nazareth as a wicked place. So when, so when Nathaniel asks a question in John chapter 1, 45 to 46, it's coming on your screen. You will read with me. John chapter 1, 45 to 46. So... Um, I'm unsure that the person in the AV won't be falling asleep because the text is coming up. So the following day, come with me. The following day when Jesus went to go to where? He found Philip and told him what? Follow me. Now Philip was from 
Bethsaida. I notice they keep on telling you where the people were from. Watch this. The city of Andrew and Peter. Philip found Nathaniel and said unto him, We have found the... We have found... Keep going. Him of whom what? Moses in the law and also the prophet wrote Jesus of Jesus of Nazareth. Nazareth. Notice the city, the son of Joseph. And Nathaniel said unto him, Can any good come? You're sleeping now. Come out of Nazareth. Philip says, Come and see. Listen to Philip's question. Can anything good come out of Nazareth? Do you know sociologists, sociologists, sociologists have noted that many of us, we are crippled financially, emotionally, and our success is diminished based on where we're from. Come with me. You can be so far. Your life chances, if you're, if you're born in Riverway, you're more likely to be successful than if you're born in Chatham. <clears throat> Somebody caught there. <laughs> you are more likely to be successful if you're born in Chelsea than if you're born in Brixton. Your locality, according to sociologists, will blight your mindset and your ambition. And so he encouraged people sometimes to, to, to become successful, you need to move from one space to another. Are you with me so far? Your environment can encourage or discourage your success. Come with me now. Have you thought about this? Let me throw a question out there. Are you biased and judgmental based on people's locality? Oh, you're sleeping now. Um, are your decisions about others, their, their, their life opportunities, their life outcome based on their locality and not on their ability? Are you associating or disassociating with people based on their locality rather than on their morality. Did you get me? The Bible encourages us in Deuteronomy chapter 10, 17 and 18. It won't come on your screen. This is from the Message Bible. This is the Bible I read sometimes. For those of you who are King James Version, please don't forgive me. Here's what the Message Bible says. God, your God, is the God, if you can, if you can find it, that would be very nice. God, your God, is, is a God of all gods. He's the master of all masters. A God immense and powerful and awesome. He doesn't, listen to this now, he does not play favorites. I say amen for that. He takes no bribes. He makes sure orphans and widows are treated fairly. Takes loving care of foreigners by seeing that they get food and clothing. God doesn't play favorites. We should treat people with love and respect, regardless of who they are and where they're from. We must learn that none of us can determine who our parents are or where we were born. Listen, I am, as I've said before, I am of Jamaican descent, born in Jamaica. However, there's no Jamaican because the Jamaicans were killed by the British. My four parents are from Scotland. My mother's father is from Scotland, born Full white. I know I don't look it. <laughs> my grandpa my father's parents are from China. My eyes might say it. <laughs> and my grandmother's parents are from Ghana. I'm a third Ghanaian, a third Chinese, and a third Scottish. No one I'm so confused. <laughs> And British by, by passport. <laughs> We're just born into situation and circumstances. Are you with me? But your life choices and decisions will determine your destiny. 
Amidst all the things I've said, your life chances and choices will determine your destiny. As Adventist Christians, we must be focused not on where people are from. Hello, somebody. Our empathy must not be linked to the color of somebody's skin or their academic ability, but everybody must be treated equally. Amen. As Christians, we must be, must be hope bearers. We, we, our words must lift people. We must not ostracize people or isolate people. Understand, people want to be validated. They want to feel safe. They want to feel loved. And because we are children of God, then we should learn to love everybody. Here's what Paul says, Colossians chapter 4, verse 6, write the text down. He says, let your speech, it's coming on the screen, because you need to share the sermon with me. I still have 10 minutes to go. Let your speech, it's coming on the screen, Colossians chapter 4, verse 6. Let's go. Let your what? Speech always be with what? Notice with what? Grace. Come on now. Season with, unless you have high blood pressure. <laughs> Avoid salt. Let's go. That you may know how you ought to answer each. So grace and salt. Scripture tells us that we should love everybody. Love doesn't harm its neighbors. It hurts no one physically or emotionally. Words do hurt. Think before you say something to hurt someone's feeling. Not only words said direct to the person, but words said when that person is not around. Some of us, we say, we don't say anything when you're around. That's when you should say it. Give the person an opportunity to respond. Some of us, we are keyboard warriors. You know who keyboard warriors are? People who like to send messages, right? So what was Nathaniel's question? Let's go back to the text. John 1, 4, 46. His question was a question of locality. And Nathaniel said, can any good thing come out of Nazareth? Philip says, come and see. In a world where people are hurting, they need validation, security, and hope. Um, Riverway, Seventh-day Adventist Church must challenge itself. We must challenge Riverway to be different. Uh, we should listen to people's infirmities, maladies, affliction. Uh, we must be moved by people's um, circumstances and condition. Our empathy towards the other must not be hinged on feelings, emotions, ethnicity, status, or nationality. Rather, our relationship with God must drive us to be the voice for the voiceless, love for the unlovable, and pardon for those who are unpardonable. I say amen for that. Amen. You see, when I come out of London, I have to say amen for the members. <laughs> our reaching, our conversation must not be selective. We must be intentional and deliberate as born-again Christians. Our entrance into faith requires that our thoughts and feelings are filled, listen to me carefully, with the love of God. We must become like shepherds, constantly searching for water for those who are thirsty, Frequently watching out for the predators, for those who are trying to hurt the vulnerable. Patiently dealing with those who are considered and treated like outcasts. We, listen to this point, tweet it to a friend. If you can't tweet, text it. We serve a God. He's a God of the outcast. I'll say amen to that too. Amen. What an offensive question. Posted by Nathaniel Pastor Alex. Can there be any good thing come out of Nazareth? That was an offensive question, wasn't it? A rude, bumptious question. But Nathaniel was real. You know the members in the church who like to ask questions that nobody else likes to ask? But everybody wants to ask. Have you ever been there? Something must be said, but nobody wants to say. And the moment you say, they say you're rude and bumptious. But yet still they appreciate the fact that the question that nobody wants to ask is a question that must be asked, and it's a question that you've asked. And so, whilst they're enjoying the fact that the question was asked, and you're being vilified and demonized, they call you troublemaker for asking 
questions. They call you mischievous. They will tag you and stain your reputation because the question that everybody wants to hear and nobody wants to ask, you are brave enough to ask a question. Nathaniel's question was, can any good thing come out of Nazareth? Understand, Riverway, some people can be downright rude, thoughtless, cruel, insensitive, and difficult. Understand whether they mean it or not, some of us, our words are so sharp and hurtful, and we enjoy people being in pain because of what we say. There are some members of the church, Pastor Alex, when, uh, well, I, I'm still the pastor, their words get onto your skin. They're beastly. Sorry, repulsive, uh, unlovable. And they make every effort to say things that just hurt. Maybe not in Riverway Church. You're a good church. Amen. Oh, only on this side. <laughs> this side said nothing. Nathaniel's question was offensive. It was offensive, yet it was one that needed to be asked. It was not just about a question of locality. That concern Nathaniel. He says, Can any good thing come out of Nazareth? It was a question of, of character. Of what? Character. Locality is where you're from, character is who you are. Really? Can any good person come out of Nazareth? As a matter of fact, can the Messiah come from Nazareth? You see, character is one of the most important things in life. It's more than just how people see you and how they feel about you. It's about how you live. It's about how you think. It's about who you really are. Here is what Frank Outlaw says. Some of you might know, not the younger person, but those of us who were born in the 70s. Character is, is shaped by your habits. Come on now. Shaped by your thoughts. Watch this now. Watch your thoughts. They become your words. Watch your words, they become your, okay, you know it now. Watch your action, they become your habits. Watch your habits, they become your, and watch your character because it determines your destiny. Uh, listen to what uh, 1 Samuel 16, 7 says. You probably know it for those of you who read the Bible. For those who don't, let's go to it. 1 Samuel 16, verse 7. But the Lord said to Samuel, do not look on his appearance or the height of his stature because I have rejected him. He's going there now. Uh, 1 Samuel 16, 7, 7. Do not look on his... Do not look... He's not there yet. He's, he's still sleeping. Right? Okay. Is he awake now? Where's my AV person? We're using a new system. Oh, it's a new system. Okay. Blame the system. Right. <laughs> but the Lord said to, to Samuel... Do not look on his appearance. You need to go to the word to, 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 to verify. Or, or, or the height of his stature, because I have rejected him. Watch this now. For the Lord sees not as man sees. Man look on the outside, but the Lord looks on the, the heart. Did you hear that? Outside might look right, but the heart is corrupt. Have you ever seen a well dressed corrupt man? His name was Hitler. Height might be there, but inside is flawed and defective. Speech might be impeccable. Ah, oh, Nigel Farage, when he speaks, he's convincing, but words are meaningless. So here's the story. Five minutes to go. The story is told of a, of a prosecuting attorney in a small town courthouse. Call his first witness, an elderly woman to the stand. He approached her and says, Mrs. Jones, do you know me? Yes, Mr. Williams, I know you. Everybody in, the talk, in, the, in this small town know you. As a matter of fact, Mr. Jones, uh, uh, Mr. Williams, you are a big disappointment. You lie, you cheat, you manipulate people and talk about them behind their back. You think you're some big shot. You are nothing but a lazy brain man. You're nothing but a two-bit paper pusher. Do I know you? Yes, I do. 
the lawyer was stunned. He turned and he looked at the defense attorney and he says, Mrs. Jones, do you know him? She replied, why, of course, everybody knows Mr. Bradley. He's a youngster. As a matter of fact, I changed his nappy. He's, he, he, you thought you were a disappointment? He's a great disappointment. He's lazy. He has a drinking problem. He can't even maintain a good relationship with anyone. As a matter of fact, he's such a poor lawyer that nobody wants him to defend them. Do I know him? Yes, I do. At this point, the judge wrapped the courtroom to silence and called both lawyers to the bench. In a very quiet voice, he said with menace, if either of you ask her, if she knows me, you'll all be in court, contempt of court, and you'll be going down. Character matters. You might smile. Charles Spurgeon says, a good character is the best tombstone. Those who loved you and were helped by you will remember you. Carve your name on hearts, not on marbles. In short term, people follow you because of what you do. In longer term, they love you because of who you are. Your character matters. It was not just a question of locality. Can anything good come out of Nazareth? It was also a question of character. Finally, this absurd idea that the Messiah came out of Nazareth, it was not just a question of locality, nor a question of character, it was a question of mission. A question of what? Mission. 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 1 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 27 is coming on your screen. 1 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 27 is coming on your screen. 1 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse 27. God has a way of doing crazy things. 1 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 27. He has a way of, I'm waiting on, on this one, because you need to hear this one as I come to a close. God has a way of doing crazy things. Here we go. But God has what? Chosen, come with me now, what? The foolish things of the world to put to shame what? The wise and God has what chosen the weak things of the world to put to shame the things which are amen. Uh, listen, listen, can any good thing come out of Nazareth? It was not just a question of locality or a question of character, it was a question of mission. You see, gee, God could have caused God could have caused Jesus to be born uh, in, a, in a palace. Yes, he was born in a Major. He could have caused a very lovely young lady to birth the Son of God. Instead, he uses Mary. God looks beyond the great things and he uses the simple things to confound the wise. Because it was whilst in Nazareth that Jesus preached his first sermon. It was whilst in Nazareth he lived a holy, God-fearing life. Watch this. It was whilst in Nazareth that he was filled with the Holy Spirit. He was walking right in Nazareth, he was talking right, and he was living right in Nazareth. Let me say, the Bible says in Luke chapter 2 verse 40, And the child grew and waxed strong in spirit, but wisdom, the grace of God was upon him. Listen to me, where you're from doesn't determine where you're going. Where you're from does not determine the kind of person who you are. You see, the mission, the mission of God is to save the lost and those on the margin of society. He, his mission is, is to be touched with the feeling of our infirmities. Jesus empathized with the weak and the frail people. And only somebody kept from Nazareth can understand your pain. Hello, somebody. Only somebody from Nazareth can understand your suffering. And only somebody from Nazareth can understand the nobodies of this world. So I thought somebody would say amen. You see, my friends, this man from Nazareth, he was bruised, beaten, and broken. We're told that he was stripped and scarred. He was oppressed and afflicted. He was imprisoned and faced our judgment. He was cut off from the living and buried in a borrowed tomb. I say it is by his stripes. The members in Riverway Church are healed. Amen. 
the question today as I come to a close. Can any good thing come out of Riverway? Can any good thing come out of Moldova? Can any good thing come out of Mauritius? Talk to me, somebody. Can anything good come out of Yugoslavia? Can anything good come out of South Africa? Or the Philippines? Can any good thing come out of Riverway? Come and see. God CV is crazy. He has a way of going to crazy places. He has a way of going and picking the most unusual people. God CV tells me that yes, something good can come out of Riverway. Did he not go and pick Rahab? Oh, hallelujah to the Lamb of God. I'm going to get nasty spiritually in this place. He went to Rahab. Rahab was living in Jericho. He uses Rahab to save his people. God is crazy. What about Gideon? And nobody, nobody counted him. Nobody valued him. But God went and he plucked Gideon. And by the power of Gideon, the enemies of God were destroyed. What about David? A little shepherd boy. All he had was a sling and a few stones. But didn't God use him? God has a way of going into crazy places and picking crazy people to do mighty and marvelous things. Can any good thing come out of Riverway? Yes. Come and see. Come and see. Come and see in Riverway where lives are being transformed and lives are being changed. Come and see. Isn't that what he said to Nathaniel? Come and see. What did Nathaniel see? He saw the deaf hearing. Did he not? He saw the lame walking. Did he not? He saw the naked being clothed. He saw the hungry being fed. Did he not? And most of all, he saw the dead being raised. But yet still, the greatest thing that Nathaniel saw was Jesus, the Son of God, on the cross. Dying for your sins and for my sins. But that's not even the greatest news. He saw that though he went down in the grave, he popped up came up and because he lives I can face tomorrow Amen. what did he see he saw a Jesus who loved everybody Amen. when people ask a question can anything good come out of Riverway don't tell them some things are better seen than heard and when they come to Riverway, they'll feel the love. When they come to Riverway, they'll feel the warmth. When they come to Riverway, call it doesn't matter. Because all of us are equal at the foot of the cross. When they come to Riverway, they will recognize that their pain are cared for. When they come to Riverway, they realize that their burdens it's everybody's burden. There's some things that are not spoken. They're best seen. Can anything good come out of Riverway? It's not a question of locality. Nor character. It's a question of mission. Come and see. Let them see that the Spirit of God is in this place. Amen. Amen. Amen.